Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We have an SBC that has taken over FC25 because of its good value, potential upgrades, and the cracked card that it already is. Yes, guys, we're talking about the SBC from yesterday. It's making prices move so mad on the market. Prices are up over 150% on certain cards as people buy entire teams to link to this brand new card because it's such an insane player. We have to talk about the market because it's rising. Really easy time to make coins and even have a team right now because prices are looking really good. And what could be coming today on Monday in terms of content on FC25? Upgrade packs? That's what we usually see. We'll talk about it in today's video. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Now, before we get into all that SBC content, that's making things go crazy. Let's take a look at the other content that was released yesterday on FC25, starting with a new Flash Rush event that is all about the road to the knockouts. Now, once again, we have a new Rush event, but nothing has changed on the objective side for this mode. So we have a new event. Maybe it's fun. We want to play Rush, but there's no reason to play it right now. If you think about all the other game modes that are on this game, squad battles, rivals, foot champions, which a lot of us have just finished, right? There's actually an incentive to play the mode. This is Ultimate Team, after all, where you're getting rewards, packs, or some other sort of progression towards a better squad throughout the year. And that's kind of the grind and the chase of the whole mode, right? Right now in Rush, I would believe that just about every single one of us has completed our 70,000 Rush points, which we thought this was updating every single week. It's now been more than a week for this last reset. We've been through a couple of different Flash Rush modes now with no real objectives to play for. So right now, Rush is kind of feeling stable because there's nothing really to even chip away at like a milestones rush if objective would be awesome that's something that we need in this game right now and i think we're starting to feel a little bit annoyed with rush at least me personally that, that most fun outlet that i've enjoyed the most playing on this game is now backseat maybe like down the list of the gameplay modes that i'm prioritizing because there's no real incentive to play it right now so i hope whatever issues are being had here or whatever content they need to release to spice it up they get it done soon all we need is a milestone objective to get like a million rush points in a certain amount of time by the end of the season for some, even some just decent packs it would at least give some incentive to be playing that mode at the moment so a little bit unfortunate there because there's no real grind in rush now let's talk about evolutions because we had a new evo yesterday and guys i know ea said they fixed evolutions but the way they dropped this new evo yesterday i don't think they fixed evolutions i think this is a band-aid over the situation the problem and i want to tell you why Fifty thousand coins for the cannon which is a really good upgrading evolution the problem is it's very restrictive once again take a look max 78 overall and how many is that? Seven total player requirements. Guys, this feels like an FC24 evolution. More on that in a second. This Evo itself, Brennan Johnson in my club, might be the one that I do if I end up doing this 50,000 coin Evo. He looks pretty good. He's one of the best cards that comes out of this four-star skill move boost. You can get a plus one skill moves up to four. Power shot, acrobatic, inside forward plus plus, which is nice, and then rapid play style as well which is very good and you see plus 16 defending some really good passing shooting uh dribbling and physical attribute boost as well the whole thing is it's supposed to create a card like gareth bale remember the octopus was for matweedy this is for gareth bale but again max 78 overall unless you're going to try to find a player from your favorite club or favorite nation even if you look at the Footbin most popular page, there's not a lot of cards in here. A couple of chain evos with Tim Weah. There's the Brennan Johnson. This Pedro Perea card looks pretty sick if you need a Serie A link right now, which of course a lot of us do as we'll talk about the SBCs in a second. But here's the issue with the evos, guys. And this may be a, an entire video in itself, but this is an FC24 feeling evolution. The whole point of FC25 Evos was to have less requirements for them to be less restrictive, but for those limits to be in place, right? If we go back to the Power Surge Evo, you see these limits in place for these players as you look through the different upgrades, right? Max 85 pace, 77 shooting, 78 passing over here. None of that is shown on this new or even any of these new Evos. There's been nothing about stat 
limits. It's all about the requirements. It makes me think that there's still problems with evolutions and we maybe won't be getting too many good ones until that's fixed. It feels like a band-aid solution to this problem that EA has right now. Because once again, guys, you look inside of here again, there's nothing about stat limits in any of these levels of rewards, which in the other EVOs that we've had this year, there's been stat limits and there's been way less requirements because that's been the whole point of the new EVO system, right? To open it up to allow more players in. So if there's truly problems with EVOs and we're still awaiting some news and some communication from EA relating to EVOs, because once again, they said they're going to be giving us more info on how they're going to compensate in terms of evolutions. The people who had issues with the Power Surge EVO, we need some more communication with them because not only is Rush falling behind at the moment content-wise, EVOs are going to start to fall behind too if they can't fix up. EVO started great. Rush started great. We're kind of heading down. We'll see, guys. We hope they can fix it up soon. Now, let's go to SBCs where the content is popping, especially with that one big player SBC yesterday, of course. We got to start with a quick word on the RTTK Challenge 5. It's worth doing. You guys know what I say about these. 3,000 coins. Put some, what is it, silvers, non-rare golds, whatever is required. I haven't even looked at this, but it's 3,000 coins. Primex Players Pack. It's always worth a try. I got to get this one today for the small prime RTTK Challenge 4. It's kind of like marquee matchups. Worth doing every week. Whenever you just sit down and have a couple minutes to do an SBC, you have a few things in the club, you get it done. That's about it. Now, now, the big SBC that is absolutely taking over this game. Guys, welcome to the biggest SBC so far and the best SBC so far of FC25. We had Varan on Saturday, and that was backed up yesterday on Sunday with Taram. Insane value, insane card. Now, you look at this card, and you're like, wow, he's Hullet Gang. Yeah, that's crazy. Then you look at the price on Footbin, and you say, wow, he's 57K. Wow, that's crazy. I just said wow too many times. But an 84 and an 85 rated squad for this player, if you've used his gold card in game, which I am somebody who has 15 or 20 games or so in the earliest stages of the game, he is different. He's one of those players that plays above his stats. He's an awesome center defensive mid. He has the great role for CDM as well. He has holding plus as a center defensive mid. And the stats are just insane all around. A lot of people are putting an anchor or a shadow on the card to boost up the physical and the defending and the pace. I also would not be against boosting the passing. Like, I thought about an architect. His defending is probably going to be good enough. He's got good play styles. Press proven, ping pass. He has intercept bruiser and relentless like this card for 57,000 coins with the potential to upgrade for Juve and honestly Evo potential too guys if he doesn't get any upgrades for a long time 85 rated with stats that are that kind of level across the board means that he could be evolvable sooner than you even think so this is definitely the best value SBC of the year and of course with it being so cheap so many people can go ahead and do it. And of course, the French links, the Serie A links that have been popping recently. There's so much. This is the perfect storm for EA to drop this SBC. Of course, we've had the Varane, as I just mentioned, a bit of a more expensive one. We had Serie A Ben Godfrey. Maybe you're going to link Godfrey to Tehran for the Serie A links. And of course, everybody's looking to do the link between brother to brother, Marcus Tehran to Kefrem Tehran. But it's not just those links that you need to get the chemistry, right? A lot of people have been going to the market. That's why this SBC is so crazy, by the way. People are going to the market and cards are going up insane because people are going and buying cards to put together in teams with the Tehran brothers, maybe a couple of other Serie A items that they need to build out chemistry. This Bremer card is extinct at 60,000 coins. You know it's a crazy SBC when everybody is building teams around one certain card. 25K for Bremer up to 60K unbelievable 140 percent rise on the market tomori is 80 percent up he's 41,000 coins bastoni is like crazy mike magnan of course has the france link and the Serie A link to the new Taram. He's up 75% to 28k. Inform Bremers, 200,000 coins. Gold Dybala, Inform Kavaritz Skelia. It's not just the Serie A cards, guys. It is French cards as well. DeMarco is going up like crazy. He's flying. French cards, I want to show you a few of them here. Let's see. Um, Kunde. 
Kunde is one that I saw that's going up a lot yesterday. Some of the heroes are going up like crazy too. Kunde yesterday was 108 at rewards, spiked after content to 130, went down just a little bit, still 125,000 coins. That's not even that good of an example. There's a lot of French cards that are flying. Specifically though, it is the Serie A cards that are moving because again, when an SBC comes out like this, and we saw this a lot last year in 24, but this is a card that Maybe you can link almost already in your team, but you need one or two more players, probably a Serie A player. That's why you see those going up the most on the market. You need one or two or more of those to get that full chemistry or to get enough chemistry for where you feel comfortable using that player in your team, not on zero or one cam or whatever. But he's good enough and cheap enough that so many people are doing it, and therefore you're seeing the prices of those links to that player go up on the market. Now, I want to tell you guys about one crazy flip that I had yesterday. This Cordoba, I bought for 487,000 coins. He was getting really, really rare. This is the power of rarity and crazy demand for players linking to the new cards that come out via SBC. This Cordoba was 487, which is actually up. He was usually like 450. I bought him at 487. Five minutes later, he was 650. Sold him there. He's now back down to 500K. But that's the sort of stuff that you saw. Not just... Um, that Cordoba card is up. If you take a look at all the Serie A heroes, Nakata is up. He's 100. He was 130k. He's 185,000 coins. All of the Serie A heroes are up in price. Um, a lot of the Serie A cards, as we looked at, are up in price. But here's the one thing I would tell you: is I, if you're not in this for the long term. Just think about it right now. This is the peak of the hype for this Taram card. People have done Marcus Taram. People are working on Varane. People have done Godfrey. People are getting Tamori and Bremer. And we're building teams around this card, right? It's very hype. Yes, it is. But this is probably the peak of the hype. Usually when this sort of stuff happens, prices don't continue to rise. When a player goes up 180% and they're still in packs, his gold card's back in packs, guys. He was in Team of the Week last week. His gold card is back in packs, right? He dropped down. He was 45K. Now he's 24K, right? This is the type of card that you probably would like to sell. If it's not in your team, if it was an investment, this is a card that you would sell. Basically, all of these Serie A cards, if you're looking to maximize profit, the sell time would be soon, no matter where you bought it, because this hype will not last for forever. There will be new SBCs that will come out, new cards that people will start putting into their team. So I do think that this is some of the peak prices that we'll see for these Serie A cards, in my opinion, but trade with them. Sell them for the crazy inflated prices that they are at the moment, whether it's a promo card, whether it's a gold card, whatever it may be, or maybe it's just a French card that's up a couple extra thousand coins because of the hype for the France links right now. Just sell it into the hype and enjoy that extra profit and kind of learn from this sort of market movement because it'll happen multiple uh, times again this year. I would also imagine, guys, that when Bundesliga cards come out, some of the same stuff would happen. Again, it's the nation, it's the club, it's the hype for the upgrade. It's got this Taram and, of course, his in-game playability and how good he is in-game. He's got the hair trade as well. There's just so many things that go right for this card, which is why everybody is going and doing that cheap, insane value SBC and putting them in putting him into their teams. Now, let's talk about the rest of the market that is actually going up too. Guys, I bought a couple of cards yesterday. I bought a Frimpong. He did very, very well. We had some squad battle rewards flips like the Martinez. And I mentioned in last night's video, sorry, that was the wrong day. Um, the Vandevins, I mentioned in last night's video, he was 59,000, picked him up there, sold him for 70. I picked up the Martinelli's from Team of the Week 3, still holding on to him. Who else did I buy? Oh yeah, I bought Lautaro last night. That's right. Um, picked up the Verts and sold him for nice profit too. So it was a really good day on the market yesterday after squad battle rewards, but the squad battle rewards market was actually different than what we imagined it would be. So this is the drop of when you had rewards. The market was actually lowest before squad battle rewards, even though the past couple of weeks, when we've gotten those rewards given out, usually the market drops with supply. That did not happen this week. The market just started to go straight up. You had this little bit of a dip here, and then it just kept going into content, have another little dip, and then it just kept going. And the market is still pretty high. And guys, I think it's going to continue to go up. Take a look at Kiesa, for example, right now. He's not in the series anymore but look at his card price yesterday from 123k he rose after squad battles to 130 dipped at content to 127 shot back up after that to 140 
The market's looking really good at the moment. There's a lot of demand. There's not as much supply coming in. Weekend league rewards are given out to those who didn't claim um, them throughout the weekend today. And you're going to see more coins hit the market. You're going to see the last bit of supply from weekend league rewards. And I honestly think that that brings a great opportunity to look through the market, try to find some players on the mid to high tier meta that you think still have room to go up in price, not only because you know, they're just meta, but maybe because they've already been there. Like Sophia Smith on Saturday was 230 all the way to 260. She's back at 230,000 coins again, right? Yeah, sure. You've got some hype with the Serie A. I think Saliba is actually a good one too. He's back up a little, but yesterday he was 200 down because of Varane. Peaked at 228. This card at like 210, maybe even 215. I might snag that. Guys, I really feel positive about the market heading into this week because, again, this is where the weekend league rewards will start to show how much coins they will be putting on the market through all of the packs and just the pure coin value that they give out. This is where you're going to start to see the impact of those because people are going to get those coins and they're going to turn that into buys for their team. I honestly think, again, if you do a little bit of research, you find some prices that are down in the market, like this gold Erling Holland. 170k 160 something thousand coins on saturday he went from 170 to 200 back down to 170 yesterday he went from 170 up to 186 this card moves every single day i'm looking to get him in the 160s he might be 190 again by late tonight on monday tomorrow on tuesday i think the market's a very safe place at the moment that if you've bought a card for your team if you want to buy a card for your team look for some undercuts get a couple low prices look at the flipping graphs find a good price probably safe to hold in your team until Wednesday. Honestly, this is the best part about the weekend league market that I think we're going to have this year. Bar some crazy store packs that EA put in, like those uh, for you packs, uh, the welcome back kind of store packs that say like, you've been playing this game for a certain number of days, the for you section in the store. As long as EA don't drop one of those this week, we should see a market that rises between today on Monday and a Wednesday just from pure demand and a lack of supply that's my idea of how the market looks this week. So it should be a pretty safe time to be invested in a number of different things, even road to the knockout cards. Obviously, road to the knockout team one. I bought Frimpong yesterday at 575 because this guy is just rare. He just keeps going up and he's up a lot less than some of the other cards in his promo team. But look at the prices of these cards. Romero's 170. Cherokee's up 100,000 coins from his. He was 150. Now he's 250. DeMarco's obviously flown. I would put DeMarco, by the way, if you have this card, if you bought him for like 80 to 90K, he went up so much yesterday. I would be tempted to sell. I think that's a little overvalued, but still a live card. He's very rare. You could keep holding. Look at Alvarez and Doku, both 800K. Diani exploded yesterday as well. A lot of these RTTKs are moving, and so are the Team 2 cards. I bought two Havertz. I still have one. I sold another one for basically a 10,000 coin small profit just so that I could get a couple more coins. I think he goes up further today. I think Garnacho could move more today. I think most of this promo team has potential to rise in price, the rare ones specifically, until we get supply again. I know they're in packs. I know they are, but the rare ones like Kane, Havertz, Dybala, Barcola as well. Loftus Cheek's pretty rare. And of course, you've got Pulisic Player of the Month around the corner, potentially. That voting's going to be ending soon. Hype around that SBC coming. And you've got the Serie A links. Even with Taram yesterday, he dropped. He's now coming back up because there's a lot of people that want to use that card with the Serie A links. These cards are going to be interesting to watch and potentially rising a bit until Wednesday. And kind of last call on Team of the Week 3, if you want to make an investment here, a lot of these are already up too. Vanda I think you got to get under 160. Yesterday, he was 150 and went up to 170. If this is something that you want for your team, I think you're trying to get on bid or a snipe early today because it's probably going to go up as they near Wednesday when they go out of packs. So those are probably holds. And if you want to trade in the rest of the market as well, these team of the week one and two cards Look at Rafinha, 350, 360, he's flying. Verts is still a little bit low. Diaz is still a little bit low as well compared to how some of the other ones have flown. And if you look at Team of the Week 1, you know, these cards, Rodman is 230. Dembele is going up, but not a ton. Um, Gabriel is starting to go up as well. Messi still in that, you know, up 20K range from his lowest point. The cards on the out-of-packs market are starting to move up in value as well. I think it's a really safe time to be involved in the market and to make some buys. Just try to find something that's low enough that you feel like you have some improvement and some range to go up 
further in price. Heroes, Icons, going to be a great place to trade as well because once again, people are going to get those coins from rewards and put those into these high level cards that they're now going to be able to afford with the rewards that they get. So look at the graphs. The best advice I can give you is look at graphs, look at graphs, look at graphs some more because you'll be able to see what cards um, are moving up and down a lot in price. That'll tell you which ones are in demand. Now let's talk fodder for a second because guess what? This is going up too. As we have really good SBCs, these cards just continue to trickle upwards. It's not like a crazy spike. It's just like they're slowly moving up. Now, what's going to be the next point or opportunity for fodder to drop? Probably Thursday with Rivals Rewards, unless, again, we get some crazy store packs. You never know. There's always that caveat, like we talked about a couple days ago. But this for fodder right now, this investment really isn't much of an investment anymore. But if you're already in, you're just sitting back and counting dollar bills as this stuff slowly rises into this weekend, where maybe you'd want to sell it. Maybe, unless you've got it so low that you're like, Nate, these cards are probably not ever going to go that low again. And in that case, you might just be able to hold on to it before we get a huge spike sometime in the future. We might have a bit of a dip and then another spike as we get maybe our first icon or hero pack. There were rumors. I want to address this really quick. There were rumors and leaks yesterday, some of them, about a hero pack being added. Everybody's looking for the first hero pack SBC of the year. Last year, I believe it was the 10th of october when we had that or at least like the second week of october so i don't think that's going to be coming out really soon but that would be sometime on the horizon like i mentioned in yesterday's video too there's a 250k pack in the store that gives you a max 87 hero and also weekend league rewards like i opened weekend league rewards yesterday we were able to get a good rank uh, i won't spoil the details if you want to check that out that's on the second channel linked that up above right here we had a really solid comeback we clutched up in weekend league with a couple of the cards that we bought yesterday and we had some new tactics it was a blast if you want to check that out it's up there in the second channel but we have guaranteed heroes inside of this pack so they always go stuff is guaranteed in the store first then you can get it via sbcs we're not far away from that first sort of pack so fodder still seems interesting to me but it's not at a point right now where I feel like I want to invest a lot of coins into it. But if you're already invested, you're holding and it's going up in value. So again, if you want to trade in the market today, look around, find some cards. Like I got 1.5 mil. We have officially hit 2 million on the count yesterday uh, with that crazy flip um, on the main man Cordoba himself. But I'm still looking for some flips today. I'm looking for some opportunities to trade. I was just trying to get this to ROM at like 1.5 mil. I didn't want to pay that much, but 1.4 I would have paid, 1.48. And then, you know, I'm looking at some of these cards, like the Holland that I mentioned, uh, the Icons, the Heroes, RTTK Team 1s and 2s, the Out of Packs cards, should be a really, really good day to trade today on the market. So get involved with some of those fluctuations. And if you're on a low budget, chem style flips and also silvers, Silvers are still great to trade with. If you know which ones sell, search on Footbin, highest rated silvers or highest selling silvers, and then you can just get on bids for those players. But let's talk about today's Monday content and why I think it's going to be a slow day, which will help the market even be better for trading. Mondays usually just give us upgrade packs, right? And we had the 77 double last week that we could do unlimited repeatable and there's one new pack code that looks interesting that maybe be a part of content today but also it seems kind of weird too the 80 plus combo upgrade pack includes two rare golds one rated 80 or higher and one rated 75 or higher this sounds like it also could be an upgrade pack and if there was going to be an upgrade pack, this could be the one today. So I'm watching for this SBC, but I don't know how excited I am for it because, you know, if they required, what was it, like five rares for a 77 double, how many are they going to require for this with an 80 plus stipulation and then the other player is 75? So I don't know. Upgrade packs at this stage of the year. Yeah, they're fun to do. But with the gold upgrade just being tried and true, only non rares required. I keep thinking that this one may be the one to do. So I'm not even doing a bunch of those right now because the rewards and all the different modes keep hitting so good that I'm like, I'm getting a lot of fodder from those, but I'm still trying to craft um, Taram now and Varan. I've got two of four created on Varan here. I need two team of the weeks in 87, in 86 and an 87 rated squad. So I might send some upgrade packs this week, but that's what we'll be watching out for today. Of course, we'll be on the lookout for a player SBC. We still have the Liga F player of the month. Um, Ajibade, who we're waiting on at the moment. We haven't seen her SBC yet. And I guess we could have another um, player SBC, maybe a squad foundations too. I think there's probably a couple more of those to be released, maybe a corresponding objective as well. So be on the lookout for that. But I'm not expecting a big crazy day today, guys. It's probably going to be a pretty quiet Monday for us to be able to trade in the market, get some buys, watch our player prices, appreciate and value. 
with the weekend league rewards that get paid out for those last players finishing their weekend league games. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a really good day to be on the market. And honestly, what it'll be is a nice day to not have to worry about your team getting destroyed. Again, we always say that with an asterisk because you never know what EA is going to do. But the hope is today will be a nice day on the game. Get some games in, get some progress in rivals. Um, and maybe get some squad battles games done, maybe play a little bit of rush, maybe do some objectives, work on your season pass progress. It's going to be one of those days to just kind of like after the weekend league, maybe just chill out a little bit, you know, maybe it's not play any games today because how the weekend league was so stressful and crazy and tense to try to get that first wins, the first big set of rewards in from the wins of foot champions. So again, if you want to see my rewards, check those out on the second channel, I'll link that above once again. But that's the video for me today, guys. It's nice to say I expect the market to rise today and it should be continuing to rise for the next couple of days. It feels stress-free, it feels great. And I think with the way foot champs are rewards, it's going to be a nice rise even today on Monday. We'll see if EA have any surprises for us. We'll keep you guys up to date if anything changes related to that. So if you're not following on Twitter slash X, get that link down below in the description. Also follow the Twitch stream. We'll be live there today, upgrading the RTG, a little bit of gameplay, some trading, maybe some upgrade packs as well. We'll get into some fun stuff for sure. But if you enjoyed this video, drop thumbs up on it, comment below if you have any questions, and of course, subscribe if you're new. I will see you guys today on stream. Have a great Monday. It's been Nathan for the count. See you there. Peace out.